Okay, we come to the next uh, presentation. It's from Hans Matzböll from DTI. So Hans is a senior uh, specialist at DTI and part of the decarbonization and high temperature heat pump group. He has more than 30 years experience in various aspects of water vapor compression from vacuum ice to high temperature. In particular, he has uh, knowledge in design and development of turbo compressors. His educational background is physics from the University of Aarhus and CERN in Geneva in Switzerland. So please, Hans, uh, we are looking forward to your presentation. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for the introduction and, and thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, as you mentioned, um, I'm part of a, a group at um, at DTI uh, that work with the um, with the um, decarbonization strategies, assist companies in 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 um, in doing this uh, this mapping of of the um, of the way to to decarbonization, which is necessary for everyone at some point because of the of the goal of to be to reduce the CO2 uh, emission. We have a concept for for this uh, for this uh, process and. Uh, you probably know my my colleague Benny Minisulov, who is in charge of all this activity. He's he's uh, defined this this um, this concept where we start with a mapping of the existing process and develop some concepts solutions where we try to analyze what technology is available and and the perspectives. And as part of this presentation, presentation today is is, is is steam compressors, which is available or, or, or in development. And then we continue with a real roadmap, and a very important one is to de-risking this uh, carbonization process before we can before the final implementation. We also init initiate uh, a set of uh, projects in this in this group. Um, I'll come back to this later on. And we uh, finally we have a uh, test facilities where we can test high temperature heat pumps um, up to two to 2.5 megawatts it is and up to 180 degrees supply temperature shortly will be increased to 200 degrees so to my knowledge um next um i think a lot of attendance today is here because they already use steam as a in, in energy infrastructure and um what what else? It would be obvious to to suggest that we would use uh, steam as a medium for the heat, for the heat pump that should be applied. And from we have seen now several presentations that from a thermodynamic term dynamic point of view, it is a very excellent choice. We have a significant better COP just due to the physical properties of of steam, in particular in this range between 100 and 250 degree where we are concentrating the efforts. But in principle, we could go even higher. We could go to plus 300 for, with steam because the, of the high critical um, uh, temperature. And as we mentioned, um, we don't have any future uh, threats or, or ban due to, to uh, break down products, for example, PFAS or whatever. And uh, also water is, is not flammable at all. Cheap and it's well known already by the industry. So a lot of the component components for the steam system uh, for the steam heat pump are, exist already evaporators valves and so on, but uh, the compressor is missing in a lot of cases. There are some available and, and we will have a list of them later on, but the the main issues we have to face with with this uh, compressor uh, is uh, or the main challenge I would say is is, is the issue with oil. We need to go for oil free uh, compressor types or use water as as a film lubricant or or in, in the ceiling, in mechanical ceiling. Also, we have a low atomic mass, 18, and uh, that gives one of the consequences is that we need a high pressure ratio in order to achieve some uh, given temperature difference. And also, as a consequence of the high pressure ratio, we have a high uh, discharge temperature. So uh, I'll try to mention some of the um, some of the um, available technology, which is uh, TL9. Um, Compressors and a lot of them, are, some of them are originates from from the process industry where steam is just considered as one of the parameters, design parameters. In in uh, it could be any gas. Uh, so along with temperature and and pressure and so on, we specify it should be steam. And also there's some um, compressors are, um, originates from MVR process, where we have about. Um, they work about 100 degrees, more of them, and have a relatively small temperature lift. 
we have this Kobelko Prize, which we have already seen and pre uh, presented. Um, this is one of the few uh, compressors that has been developed specifically for high temperature heat pumps so far for steam compression. And then in the pipeline, we have an awful lot of uh, compressors. Um, we have seen uh, the, the previous uh, presentation here with the with the um, high speed uh, centrifugal compressor. That's one example, and we have some others. I will try to. They originate from some of them from existing compressor technology, and some of them from from vacuum pump technology. But in general, there's a great need for further development of hardware and also for how to implement these uh, compressors. The first example. Uh, of something coming from the uh, process industry. Uh, we have already seen example of from Atlas Coco. Um, it's called the integral geared centrifugal compressors. And um, they are, um, the idea of them is that we have a central uh, gear wheel, which operated at reasonable speed, a normal 3000 uh, RPM or something like that. And then uh, along the circumstances of this gear wheel, we have a, a number of turbo compressors. Um, they are different in size, which uh, reflects the fact that we have it's a multi-phase, multi-stage system where the pressure increases per stage. And um, for such a, a compressor to give pressure rate, we need a certain uh, tip speed. And uh, the present, the present, the previous mentioned example was 530 meter per second as the tip speed. Um, this is about this, this, the value. They're slightly conservative in the design, so maybe slightly lower. But in order to have um, uh, a tip speed, same tip speed, we need um, the impellers will be smaller as we go up in, in pressure. And um, it, there's an upper limit for the speed of this technology, about 40, 45,000 RPM, where uh, we start to have lubrication problems with the gear wheels. So. Um, there's a lower limit for capacity of these units, and it's often it's often in the, in a, about 10 megawatts. Um, but the upper upper limit is uh, is also high. It's, it's determined by by a lot of practical issues. Um, but in in the slightly below 100 megawatt or from 50 to 80 megawatt is typically the the upper the upper limit. There's also a cost issue because this uh, central uh, gear wheel along with the housing bearings and so on, and drive line is a kind of a basic cost, uh, independent on, on the number of uh, turbo compressors and, and the size of them. So the specific cost, uh, the cost per megawatt is um, is um, somewhat high at, at the lower uh, lower uh, capacity range, but decreases is very competitive at, 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 the high, at the high capacity units. As I mentioned, the, the uh, design is uh, rather a bit conservative because they, they come, some of them come from the petrochemical industry process. So 20, 25 degree per stage is very common. And um, and um, in between these stages, there, there's a piping and there's an intercooler typically. So even if the, the efficiency of it, the individual compressors are very high, usually be, be above 80%, the total efficiency is, is maybe 70 or 72 or some in that range. We have the manufacturers. Uh, the, uh, the very first patent was Siemens back in the 50s, I think, but uh, Siemens, MIN, Atlas, Copco, Houghton, and in principle also Turbulin is the manufacturer in um, in Europe. We have an awful lot of parameters for these uh, temperature, for these uh, high temperature heat pumps. We have capacity, we have source temperature, we have a sink temperature, and we have temperature lifts. And I have tried to make some kind of, of illustration of, of uh, what is typical for this, not sharp limits, but typical for, for this technology. So um, the capacity is in the high range. Um, temperature in principle could go to the vacuum region. Uh, Atlas Copper have reported up down to 40 degree suction temperature, point 0.1 bar absolute. And also they could go beyond the 250 uh, degrees. So, and these rectangles should illustrate that it's a, it's a state, it's a multi-state, system where the pressure rate of per state is in the order of 20 degree or 25 degree. Another option for lower capacities is um, is the um, piston compression from spilling. We have, um, well, in the order of maybe one or maybe two or three megawatts up to some 10 or, or 15 megawatts in size capacity. It, it's it's uh, it's a system where they have a pressure rate about three to one per per cylinder, but they can in the same motor block they can have low and high pressure. 
they can have a multi-state uh, system within the same motor block, some on the cylinders and on the low states and some on, on the high states. So they come in one, two, three, four, and six states, six uh, cylinder versions, and they can deliver temperatures up to about 220 degrees with water injection. So they don't need any uh, de-superheater or something else as the turbo compressors do. Um, they uh, deliver with maybe some somewhere between 10 and 20 degree uh, superheat out of the compressor. They, they are divided in two parts. The uh, lower part is oil lubricated and then there's a so shielding and then there's a double action uh, piston compressor on top. Uh, and, then in, and on top is only water and water injection. Finally, this uh, or the next one is this uh, compressor we have seen described earlier on. Uh, the SU compressor from Copelco was developed some 10, 15 years ago, and it was based on, in, uh, on an oil free air compressor. It used water injection. Uh, it was dis designed specifically for this for this unit as a second stage in a cascade with, with, um, with a more traditional heat pump at, at, at the lower temperatures. So it was designed for a capacity of 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 megawatts and a temperature increase from 125 to 165 in the beginning. Now they go to 175. I tried to illustrate it is just one capacity, but with a relative high uh, uh, pressure lift or temperature lift per, per compressor. The next one is already available is uh, coming from the MVR process that's depicted here in, in the middle. It's in a, in a way it's it's, it's the uh, ultimate uh, process integration where we have evaporation on one side, a compressor, and then condensation on, on the other side. So we regain the the idea of this MVR process is to regain the heat of evaporation by a, a small temperature lift by this compressor. Usually, this is uh, the evaporator is slightly below uh, atmospheric pressure, 80, 90, 85, 90, 95 degree uh, steam temperature. And then the, the the pressure ratio is as, as small as possible for for this one to operate because that would improve the the efficiency of the system. If we are interested in 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 the, in the um, condensing side, it's either pure water or distillery. So it's used in for dehydration in general. So the compressors we have evaporator MVR evaporators and MVR condensers. We also have compressors developed for this MVR process. And one example is the, uh, in this case, a tree lobe uh, roof blower. And um, they usually have a, a pressure rate about two or three in, in that order and, and have a temperature lift in, in the order of 20 to 20 degree. They are non-contact, which is, mean the, the limitation of the pressure rate is, is actually leakage flow. And um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of uh, manufacturers, uh, K from India, Kaiser from Germany, and Xianghu from, from China, and so on. In general, they moved out of Europe the last five, five or ten years and moved to China, most, most of them. So in this diagram, they have a large variety of, of capacities. I should mention that up to maybe one or two megawatts, these, uh, these companies, they offer standard units. Beyond, above this, they, uh, they have to, they use, um, it's, it's customized systems. Another for uh, of these MVR compressors is a is a turbofan or turbo ventilator, which also operates in typically with a 10 degree temperature lift. The pillar is a big player, and this has been for many years. Uh, and this is definitely for the for the cases where we have a larger capacity uh, of of um, we'll need for for larger cap cap capacities, and. Um, they are usually have a high efficiency, but they're usually uh, for for these for the around 100 degree. But some of the companies they are ready to modify this for higher temperatures. So the pillar have illustrated they can use a they can have a multi-state system with 10 degrees um, lift all the way up to 160, 180 degree. Um, Temperature lift is down to 10 degrees is maybe not uh, so much because they need the piping and so on for the next compressor. So. So maybe a higher pressure rate of per, per stage is necessary. So uh, this is all that is available right now. And uh, but uh, there's an awful lot of, of development taking place. I would say that uh, we try to keep us updated on, on what is going on. But we, of course, we don't know 
all, all of it. And uh, also some of it is kept in confidential so far, even if we know about it. And uh, there's definitely also, also something going on we don't know about. But something which we do do know is uh, these uh, high high speed uh, turbo compressor, direct drive turbo compressors. The the previous one from Will and Sanvi uh, illustrated this one, which is now um, available and uh, ready for for field test um, in 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 the upcoming uh, project. Uh, Capacities in the order of a point six, point about one megawatt for this for this one, and uh, they also take advance. They all take advances of this development that has been on high temperature on development of high temperature, high speed uh, permanent magnet motors. Uh, it's very uh, common to operate in a range between fifty thousand rpm and, and one hundred thousand rpm, which give uh, which makes. A tough request for uh, requirements to the bearings and to the ceilings for, for this high. So, what we'll see in in uh, in this um, service is probably a, a, a just a complete re replacement of, of units instead of service in, inside in in uh, in situ. So, and and they are very compact and very easy to to change. So, it's it's probably be the the um, the solution here. The one in the middle is from CS Techcom, where they operate in a, in a 200 kilowatt units, operating at 95,000 RPM, which is in, in progress, and also a two-stage unit with a 500 kilowatt unit going from 80 degrees to 140 is, is in, uh, in, in, uh, in progress. The one to the right is from Rotex, and it's really not a high-speed motor. It's, uh, there's a planetary gear giving a one to eight or one to twelve uh, ratio, so it's it's still a high speed motor, but not that high as as the other ones. So they are typically a, a slightly more aggressive design. Uh, we mentioned five hundred and thirty. We may may go all the way up to maybe five hundred eighty, maybe maybe six hundred meters per second for for this uh, for this one. That result in a higher pressure rate per stage, and we can go all the way up to uh, maybe two hundred degree. And also, they can operate in in vacuum if necessary. Uh, next one is uh, school compressor. We saw the presentation from Atlas Costco. There, they are in the process of of development. The type, this one to the right, is from SAM, who is uh, testing right now in in a test rig. And uh, capacities in the, also in the low uh, low megawatt region. And they also have the op the option to have a rather high pressure ratio per per states. Which is a kind kind of uh, fabled for for a lot of processes. Uh, SAM, this is SAM values. Uh, the first one has approximately 130 degrees supply temperature. The next one 165. Next in generation. So SAM Atlas Coco is on uh, Houghton also list. They have they have this uh, type of compressor. Then they are in in development and they will be available maybe in a year or two or so. From Vacuum pump uh, technology, we have the rotary wing type uh, as uh, developed by two circle. Uh, I saw on the website they have about 500 hours now for field testing. So this is the status of, of this compressor. The capacity is um, uh, in the order of for the, for the first one as well as small for the next one is 0.6 megawatts. And in the same way, they have the opportunity to have a, a 50 to 60 degree temperature lift per, per stage with water injection and the supply temperature in the range 170, 170, 160 to 170 degree. Uh, they uh, also target some kind of standard units where, where they have uh, off the shelf units uh, with, with specified uh, sizes uh, ready for, for installation. Um, also from the, the vacuum pump technology, we have this uh, spindle compressor with the upper one is the first, very first tip uh, uh, prototype where the target was to have a 120 degree temperature lift in one stage, internal compression uh, out about uh, 100 and well, a factor of one to uh, 20 almost as internal, which the internal compression leads to a higher uh, efficiency in general. Uh, but we did not quite achieve this target. We had a, a, about 12.5 pressure rate on, on this one. The next generation will be a 500 uh, kilowatt uh, unit for for the superheat project, and uh, the target here is about 160, 180 degrees supply temperature. 
Again, the idea is when this uh, is developed, it will be a sort of kind of uh, standard units uh, in, in predefined sizes, not customized as most of the existing equipment. Also, something we don't know anything about, but what has the potential is a, a, a squad compressor. It could work with water injection that could seal the uh, property, but we, we are not aware of any uh, development. Some 20 years ago, there was some of the development on the core compressor for, for steam compressing leads. Also have a, the, the uh, internal compression, which has the opportunity to or have the options to, to have a higher uh, efficiency, overall efficiency. The one to the right is a reversed uh, piston compressor. Instead of the piston moving, it's actually the cylinder that is moving uh, on a fixed piston. It's a bellow, metal bellow, uh, which is in operation now, but could be optimized for, for steam, uh, steam production. Um, again, the, the potential for this, particularly for the claw uh, uh, compressor, is a very high pressure lift per, per stage. Finally, as uh, the last slide, uh, some of the activities that's going on in, in the DTI. Um, Superheat is, has been running now for three years and it's only one year left. It develops um, three different types of, of uh, heat pumps for, for uh, at, at, uh, installation at, at the end user. It's a base, one based on hydrocarbons, one on CO2 and one on steam. And the steam compressor involved is the direct dry turbo compressor and the spinning compressor. Uh, next, the interheat is we're right in the middle of this one. Uh, it uh, should demonstrate a CO, a hydrocarbon and steam system, and um, it's uh, using a, a developing a screw compressor for this. And the spirit is uh, is the piston compressor. And uh, the size of these uh, units are uh, the superheat is a 0.5 megawatt, uh, interheat is about one megawatt, and spirit is uh, my guess is uh, to my memory is about four megawatt. So a lot of the activities, and we're still uh, applying new uh, applications every half year, and uh, have just um, applied two, uh, just sent two, uh, and we are in the period of crossing fingers now to, to, uh, to hope to have the the, uh, the grant. So thank you very much for your attention for, for this presentation. This was great, Hans. Thank you very much for this very nice overview of uh, steam compressors.